Well, um, I would like to give a warm welcome to everybody that is watching us uh, from Brazil. Uh, good morning for everyone in Brazil. And I would like to say also good afternoon for everybody that is watching us in Norway. So uh, this webinar is the first part uh, of a webinar that uh, uh, we organized for today that is in the commissioning and PNA. In the first part, we will talk about uh, the, commissioning of, the commissioning of subsea structures and floating structures. Uh, and we will have to, a couple of speakers uh, from Brazil. The second part of the webinar will be uh, more focusing PNA or the commissioning with the commissioning of, of wells. Uh, and we will start this second part at 2.30. Um, well, I would like also to say that this is the first time that the, uh, this webinar is organized um, uh, or that we receive the invitation from Innovation Norway to organize a webinar uh, in this topic. Um, Innovation Norway, Norway normally have in November a conference um, that is called the November Conference, uh, where they try to uh, strengthen relationships between Norway and Brazil in different topics. So, for example, in this year we have uh, some days where we talk about solar energy, wind energy, uh, and it's the first time that we have PNA as a main topic. Uh, we hope that in the next years we will uh, continue with this uh, topic as part of the conference. So um, to uh, start with the speakers that we prepare for today, I would like to invite uh, our speaker from the National Agency of Petroleum, ANP, uh, Nilse Oliver Costa. He is part of the Department of Operational Safety and Environment and he will give to us a presentation about the commissioning challenges and overview and opportunities in Brazil to, to work in the commissioning. So welcome, um, Nielse. It's uh, very nice to having you here. Okay, thank you, Catherine. Um, I'll, I'll share my, 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 my screen, but uh, first of all, uh, good morning to to everyone in uh, here and good afternoon to, to, to people in Norway. Uh, I'm very pleased to, and honored to be invited to speak in this uh, webinar. Uh, it's not the first one. Uh, I, I had the opportunity to have relations in the professional relations with uh, Norway. So I'm personally uh, very happy with it. Uh, I would like just uh, to add an additional comment, and is that in this first part we will have two presentations, but the questions will be at the end of the of the presentation. So please let in the comments uh, your question. Please address the person that you want to ask for, and if you can share with us your name and company, that will helpful for us to to uh, read the the questions. So we have now your presentation, um, Nielse. So just go ahead. Okay. Um, first, uh, I will present some big numbers of uh, the oil sector in Brazil. And afterwards, I'll, I'll uh, make some considerations about uh, the commissioning and mainly about the new regulation that was issued this year on the subject. Uh, uh, first, uh, there is a small disclaimer here uh, because uh, I will present some data mainly on uh, expenditures on the commissioning. And of course, companies are not very happy in uh, sharing uh, future big uh, costs because, uh, uh, and so they, they are uh, quite conservative on this. So those values can be changed a long time. And so don't take them uh, for sure. Uh, first, big numbers about the country. I will not remain much uh, time on this because I think everyone is aware of what Brazil uh, uh, looks like in uh, economics and uh, in the oil sector. It's uh, uh, quite a common subject uh, in the sector. And let's move on uh, to describe some aspects of the uh, exploration and production sector in Brazil. Uh, uh, Brazil is quite a, a, 
a significant operator uh, in oil and gas. We produce nowadays around 3 billion uh, barrels of oil uh, per day and 134 million met cubic meters of gas. Uh, we have uh, significant reserves, uh, uh, so, something uh, around 15 uh, billion uh, equivalent barrels of oil uh, as of December uh, uh, 2019. And uh, uh, those reserves are 1P and 25 3P reserves uh, at the same date. Uh, in the country, some uh, 100 companies operate, operate either as uh, operators or uh, consortia members. Uh, production in Brazil uh, occurs in three different environments. We have the pre-salt that is responsible for the major part of production, around 71%. Uh, and it's quite a novelty. It was uh, something initiated in this century, uh, a recent discovery. The post south uh, that is quite uh, old in the country, dating from the the, the uh, half of uh, of the of the uh, last century, and uh, 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 that is offshore post south. That they are the old uh, production fields in the country. And onshore, the first uh, uh, environment explored by the oil industry in the country, but uh, nowadays it is uh, it responds for quite a small parcel of production, something around five percent. Uh, we have a problem with a recovery factor. Uh, uh, worldwide, recovery factor uh, steps around uh, something like 30, 35 percent. We, up to now, have accumulated a production of 10% of the reserves. And uh, the recovery factor, 1P recovery fa factor, is around, nowadays, 16%. And 3P recovery factor, about 21%. That's quite low compared to, to world, worldwide uh, uh, standards. Uh, well, um, uh, from uh, 2000 uh, on, uh, and with the advent of pre-salt, uh, the, the country uh, devol uh, 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 developed st some strategic goals. The first one, of course, is to accelerate uh, the, the pre-salt exploration and development for quite obvious reasons, uh, reasons because, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, something like uh, the uh, top demand, uh, peak demand is is expected quite soon. Th uh, the second uh, uh, strategic goal is to revitalize uh, onshore uh, uh, production uh, and to promote the entry of small and medium product producers. Uh, we have uh, quite a lot of uh, still not very explored uh, sedimentary basins on shore, and so uh, uh, the the, uh, uh, the initiative of building uh, exploration areas on shore is is quite present nowadays. Uh, we have also many measures, uh, hundreds of major uh, fields on shore. And one goal uh, is to uh, increase the re recovery factor in these fields. Uh, at the same time, with uh, accelerating uh, exploration in uh, frontier basins, uh, uh, either onshore and offshore, despite uh, environmental and, uh, and uh, infrastructural uh, difficulties. Uh, at the same time, we have uh, the aim to uh, attract the right players for each environment. And we'll see uh, forward, we'll see uh, how is this is happening. Some, some aspects uh, uh, usually, usually uh, uh, by chance, but other quite 
uh, results of governmental plans. Uh, well, um, there is uh, lots of opportunities for uh, business in the oil sector in Brazil. Uh, as an example, I give you here some numbers of the last uh, 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 bidding round of open acreage in the country uh, that happened this month, uh, where 17 blocks were uh, bidded with a bonus of $6.2 million and an exploration effort of $31.4 million. And there is also, was bidded also a marginal area, uh, an inactive uh, uh, production, gas production field, with a bonus of $5.2 million, uh, and a small investment of $720,000. Well, uh, that was an example, but we'll have uh, some quite uh, big opportunities for business in the coming uh, years, mainly next year and, uh, and 20 and 22. First, uh, we have planned a, a bid round uh, with the offer of 96 blocks uh, in uh, many, uh, almost all sedimentary basins in the country. That will happen next year. The second opportunity is uh, the transfer of rights of oil, surplus, uh, oil surplus, uh, quite an uh, 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 intricate matter. It's in fact a case, uh, let me explain it in a few words. Petrobras was uh, granted uh, a production of uh, 5 billion barrels of oil in some areas, some prospects in the in Santos Basin. Uh, afterwards, uh, the reserves were proven much higher. So the excess, the surplus in oil is being uh, uh, bidded. Uh, well, for companies that are fond of, of uh, innovative accounting and difficult agreements, that's, that's the business. But of course, it will be successful but because it's big money. At the same time, uh, Petrobras is divesting, uh, is conducting a, a, prog a divestment uh, a program uh, in uh, and it is retiring, it's uh, uh, leaving uh, onshore operations and concentrating, concentrating uh, itself in uh, the press out. That will create opportunity for small and medium companies onshore and even in uh, offshore operations in fields where Petrobras has no more interest. That's a big uh, business opportunity in the country. Well, uh, uh, we are living a difficult time, but at the same time, uh, we have we are taking uh, measures to strengthen the, the oil and gas sector. First, uh, some reduction in, in uh, royalties for small and medium operators, mainly uh, for incremental operation resulting from uh, reactivation measures. Uh, we are uh, regulating, we are uh, normalizing contracts extension because many contracts are quite old and uh, they are approaching uh, the contractual uh, uh, exp expiration. And, and so uh, contract extension is, is a process quite common nowadays. Uh, we are simplifying regulation for marginal fields and for small operators because, uh, of course, uh, that, uh, uh, that's not quite appropriate to have uh, a big burden of regulation for those uh, agents. Uh, secondly, uh, the contract has undergone a quite a, a big uh, evolution in the last years and it's a very, uh, in commercial times, it's a very, now I, I consider it's a very attractive 
text. Uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, the agency outside of the ENP sector is conducting uh, very significant measures to open the transportation and uh, refining uh, segments in the country uh, that we are quite a remnant of the monopoly era and uh, nowadays we are seeing a diversification of operators in, this, in these segments. Um, the, in in, in uh, uh, summary, the, the, the agency, the regulator is working to restore the industry and to reduce above, risk, above ground risks, uh, 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 taking uh, uh, measures to uh, uh, have a competitive and attractive environment for business in the, in the oil company. In the, in the oil sector. But, well, uh, let's, uh, let's talk a little ab about uh, the commissioning. That's the main subject of this presentation. Uh, uh, we issued, as I, I've already said, a new regulation for the commissioning in April this year. And it had uh, three main motivations. First, it incorporates uh, uh, what is, was uh, uh, said in an ordinance by the National Energy Policy Council uh, to avoid premature uh, decommissioning and increase the recovery factor. Uh, at the same time, in this regulation stipulates uh, new processes for, for bidding and uh, uh, and also uh, 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 for the environment, environmental treatment of the oil in the upstream. Well, the second motivation uh, for this, uh, for the issuance of this uh, uh, regulation, was uh, improvement of technical, environmental, and, and operational safety and navigational requirements in a single regulation. Uh, and the third uh, uh, motivation was to establish well-defined procedures and deadlines uh, unifying three previous uh, prevailing uh, regulations. Uh, we had regulations for uh, onshore uh, decommissioning, offshore decommissioning, and uh, special regulations concerning uh, uh, reversal of goods and equipments. And that uh, was all unified under this new regulation. Well, uh, the, the new regulation has some uh, quite significant innovations. First of all, uh, it asks for comparative assessment for the commissioning alternatives, uh, the subject of, of the next presentation, uh, based on, uh, on uh, technical, environmental, social, economic, and, and safety uh, criteria. Second of all, it was uh, worked out by the three main institutions involved in the commissioning. Uh, the Environmental Agency, IBAMA, uh, the, the regulator of the sector, ANP, and the Maritime Authority, the Navy. Um, uh, it introduces a new uh, uh, requirement that is presentation of a decommission and justification study. Uh, it is uh, required for offshore, and when the agency uh, sees necess necessary for onshore or equally. Uh, this study uh, shows the, uh, that uh, any other uh, measure uh, besides decommissioning is uh, financially not acceptable, not feasible, and uh, also uh, shows uh, what has been uh, appraised by the operator. Uh, 
Of course, uh, it, it takes for granted that if something, some value can be ascribed to the field, the operator will uh, 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 proceed to uh, 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 pass it over to another operator with uh, lesser costs. So uh, the, 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 this study is mainly focused on te uh, recovery technologies and the status of the reservoirs. Uh, the second point uh, uh, present in the, the new regulation is the treatment of transfer rights. Uh, of course, uh, there is a, a motivation for, for having this in a decommission regulation because the process of transfer rights in general involves uh, partial uh, uh, decommissioning of, of the installations of a field. And uh, the regulation stipulates what the, uh, uh, the assigner and the vendor and the acquirer uh, must do about this. That is what uh, is ascribed to be de uh, decommissioned by uh, the assigner and what is left for later decommissioning by the acquirer. And of course, uh, under the proper provision of guarantees. Well, um, the, uh, this regulation also articulates decommissioning with uh, the permanent offer. That is a process where uh, uh, abandoned or inactive fields, uh, uh, production fields, are considered by the agents to be offered in, uh, uh, to the market. Uh, and of course, if does, that doesn't happen, uh, it, uh, the commissioning proceeds. But in the meanwhile, uh, it may happen that uh, uh, a bidding for the field is well is successful, and so the commissioning will proceed at a lesser extent, and uh, the remnants, uh, the, 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 the remanescent installations of the operating uh, field uh, that it was transferred will be decommissioned later by the acquirer. Well, uh, it stipulates also sale and reversal of assets. That is uh, uh, something very important under Brazilian uh, uh, legislation. And uh, uh, it must be done uh, with formal documentation. And there is a prohibition for uh, the sale of uh, wells for other uh, uh, goals uh, outside uh, oil and gas production. Uh, well, uh, the, the regulation also provides for a navigation aid project and uh, post decommissioning monitoring plan. Of course, one is the first is uh, approved by the Navy and the second one is approved by the environmental agency uh, of as regulator uh, sectoral regulator ANP uh, uh, monitors the execution of both programs and last but not least and following modern trends in regulation uh, the regulation asks for a social responsibility man management system uh, well, uh, here a small scheme of the uh, time schedule for for the process uh, for offshore uh, fields. Uh, the first documents that is the conceptual PDI and uh, the study, the justification study, must be presented uh, with five year anticipation. Uh, that uh, gives time for planning by the operator and analysis by the regulator. Uh, the concept of PDE is a subset of the entire content of the executive PDE and 
uh, it consists mainly, basically, of uh, the inventory of uh, uh, installations uh, for the, that will be decommissioned and the time schedule for 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 the process. Uh, after uh, the approval of this, these documents, a, a, an, an executive PDI or uh, uh, decommissioning program is presented. And uh, after approval, uh, it is uh, the activities, the commissioning activities will begin. Uh, of course, there are provisions in regulation uh, for the time uh, for approval by the regulator too. Uh, in all onshore uh, fields, uh, the schedule is, is a little shorter. The conceptual plan must be presented uh, two years before production termination. And uh, there is uh, uh, here an articulation with uh, uh, the permanent offer process. If the agency considers convenient, it, uh, the, uh, the, the field is put on permanent offer for 12 months. And so uh, there stops the tramitation of, of uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the commissioning plan approval. If the uh, 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 offer is successful, uh, uh, the the new operator will negotiate with the old one, which equipments will be decommissioned and which one will take care of what. There is there of course the transfer of, of operations, and after that, uh, the the uh, executive uh, 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 decommissioning plan is. Uh, uh, executed, the activities take place. Uh, in, in both cases, either onshore and offshore, uh, after uh, activity, the commission activities, there is also uh, area restoration and reclaiming. And eventually, according to determinations of the environmental authority, uh, a monitoring plan. Well, uh, from the, the point of view of decommissioning, uh, it is a big business opportunity around the world, not here in Brazil. Some $85 billion are planned for decommissioning worldwide in the next decade, 11% of what uh, will take place in Brazil, uh, what means 14 to 16 around that uh, 14 to 16 uh, uh, billion dollars uh, in, in, until uh, 2029 in the country. Uh, but uh, uh, specifically in Brazil in the short time, uh, we have for the next five years some six billion dollars expenditures in the commissioning uh what is about six percent of all investment in development and production in the country and uh 18 installations offshore installation uh, are planned to be decommissioned uh, the scenario where uh, this activity will take place is uh, quite uh, uh, a long-term scenario, but some aspects of it must be taken immediately. That is, 32% uh, of 25 uh, of uh, offshore installations are more than 25 years old, and 17% uh, are between 15 and 25 years old. That means quite a, a, a big activity in the coming years. Uh, you have here a table with uh, the location of those installations by, by uh, sedimentary basins. And uh, uh, 
In the short term, from uh, 2020 to 2024, Petrobras plans to uh, decommission 12 floating units and six fixed units. Those last ones are located mainly in shallow waters in the northeast. Uh, for, for one that wants to see more detail on this subject, uh, our website has a, a dynamic panel that shows uh, details on location uh, and which uh, 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 equipment and installation was approved uh, up to now. Uh, And also uh, uh, some statistics about uh, uh, the activity. Uh, we have also in our website, uh, unfortunately in Portuguese, uh, the approved uh, decommissioning plans uh, the, up to, to the present date. Well, uh, let, uh, so I come to some final considerations, some recapitulation of what was said uh, up, up to now. Uh, as, as for the regulation, we have uh, a new regulation that condenses three uh, previous uh, rules in one and uh, uh, a very significant trait of it is that it provides also for uh, transparency. Uh, uh, the publication of, of the plans and of uh, the, the status of analysis in the website of the agency is part of that, but also the agency, when uh, it uh, judges uh, necessary and convenient, may call for public hearings on specific projects. Uh, at the same time, the regulation provides for standardized contents of uh, the plans and reports presented to the three main involved institutions. That's quite a, a facilitation for, for the, the operators. It also articulates the commissioning with transfer of rights uh, and uh, permanent offer to very important processes in conducting uh, uh, contracting uh, of oil and gas operations in the country. Uh, it introduces comp comparative assessment that is, uh, 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 from our point of view, uh, a very helpful uh, uh, tool in treating uh, the commissioning alternatives. And it provides also for post-monitoring, post-decommissioning monitoring when the, the environmental regulator requires it. From the point of this, uh, view of uh, logistics and uh, infrastructure, uh, of course, uh, besides the, uh, the current operating vessels for uh, oil and gas, offshore oil and gas industry in Brazil, there will be a, a, a greater need for, for spe special vessels, uh, mainly heavy lifts and uh, uh, PSDs. And uh, uh, the country do, do not have them in place. Waste management is quite a, a huge problem. Uh, and waste management, uh, from the point of view of uh, environmental regulation, aims mainly for uh, to recycling. And uh, this activity is not so well developed in the country. Uh, fortunately, the uh, management and uh, uh, storage and disposal of norm residues are progressing quite uh, rapidly. Uh, we have no 
up to recently we had no licensed uh, sites for disposal what is happening now uh, despite quite big uh, inventories of encrusted material uh, for treatment that it exists uh, still uh, and last but not least when it comes to infrastructure uh, state governments are getting aware of our, an opportunity uh, we are losing for abroad that is uh, uh, production units dismantling uh, some uh, Brazilian shipyards and ports are, are being adapted for uh, receiving uh, units with uh, uh, invasive species that's a problem we, we have here uh, and but also with treatment of norm and uh, uh, special installations for dismantling uh, but of course that uh, uh, awareness is just uh, beginning we don't have yet uh, uh, real uh, 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 evident conditions of competing with installations abroad. From the side of technology, there are big opportunities in life extension and, and structural reliability, considering that many old structures will have to continue producing in recently uh, revitalized or uh, newly acquired uh, production fields, uh, environment, environmental uh, monitoring is uh, uh, a specialty that is will need for special instruments uh, uh, and uh, uh, collecting uh, media and uh, and analysis, and we don't have it sufficiently uh, grown uh, to the point that is needed for this uh, 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 for this activity of the commissioning in the country of course since uh, uh, man, uh, maintenance and uh, and uh, adaptation of old fields and many of uh, of the fields where the commissioning will take place are in this case maintenance and it, and adaptations were carried out without uh, proper consideration of the commissioning mainly because that was from an era uh, they were established in an era where uh, environmental permitting was not very effective so uh, uh, pipeline crossing and uh, uh, heavy equipment and all that are quite common problems for the commissioning in the country and so uh, newly and uh, that con conjugated with uh, the big water depth uh, uh, asked for the the development of special cutting tools uh, some innovative uh, tools that uh, do not exist in the market uh, as to this, uh, uh, these needs, I must add that there is a provision for funds for research, development and innovation uh, in the law, in the petroleum law in Brazil, by, 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 what, uh, uh, by which uh, Brazilian uh, producers uh, must apply 1% of production value in these activities in the country. Uh, so, uh, there are even uh, operators, mainly the, the biggest one, Petrobras, that has difficulty in uh, defining sufficient partners for carrying out uh, uh, research, development and innovation uh, projects in the country. So, it's a, a big opportunity for establishment of uh, research institution in the country uh, okay uh, that was basically what I had uh, to present uh, I still 
I still remain here for eventual uh, clarification for for which uh, uh, for for which for those uh, which I can uh, provide an answer. And if I can't, uh, I address you to the website here shown, uh, where you can communicate with uh, uh, the agency. I thank you very much for the opportunity of showing some aspects of the oil sector in Brazil. And uh, I uh, uh, have you a good morning. Thank you so much for your good afternoon too. <laughs> Thank you so much for your presentation. I think that uh, it was clear and we have um, a lot of opportunities to discuss uh, some questions uh, later. So uh, thank you so much. I would like now to invite uh, Marcelo, Professor Marcelo Igor from the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. He will present to us um, some research uh, that they are developing to analyze um, the opportunities or the strategies or the mechanism that we have to do uh, the commission in subsea. If you have uh, questions to do to Nilsep, I will uh, really appreciate if you can write uh, in the comments the questions for us and we will read after Marcelo presentation both questions. So welcome Marcelo. Uh, I think that we can hear you. Thank you, Catherine. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you for introduction. Hello, everyone. Thanks for for the uh, for the invite from Sobiana and uh, Innovation Norway for for presenting here at this uh, seminar. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I also thank you very much for for Nilsi for his uh, quite interesting presentation about the challenges uh, that we we have here in Brazil for decommissioning in the the next years. Um, my presentation here focuses on the, the uh, very uh, high high level overview of uh, of the research we we are conducting in, in the in the university regarding uh, multi criteria decision analysis, which is um, uh, um, a type of uh, I would like to call an improvement in the typical comparative assessment that is carried out uh, previous to the to the decommissioning, as uh, was explained by news. So uh, uh, so this is a summary of what, what I, I will present. I'll give you an overview of the problem, trying to highlight the, 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 the differences between the decommissioning uh, situations here in Brazil and those in the North Sea. Uh, I will talk a little bit about the methodology regarding multi-criteria decision. I'll give you uh, 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 examples in a case study based on, uh, on the, the field of uh, the Casson field here in Brazil. And uh, I will highlight some of the very important contributions from the stakeholders during this process, uh, during this research project that we are conducing, and uh, talk a little bit about the conclusions. Uh, this work that I will present was uh, sponsored by, by Petrobras, which is uh, uh, the, the Brazilian oil company. Uh, and uh, it's uh, 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 as an overview of the problem here in Brazil. Uh, as you know, the commissioning uh, can be divided in phases. We can uh, we see uh, the, the well plug and abandonment, uh, platform removal, and uh, the removal of the subsea infrastructure. Uh, this uh, first part here, the, the well plug and abandonment, is, uh, will be discussed in details in, the, in our next section. And, uh, but this presentation focuses on the, this last part here, which is the decommissioning of the subsea structure. The reason the, uh, that our researchers focus on that is that um, uh, typically in Brazil, we have a subsea infrastructure as shown in this image. Uh, what you see here is a lot of uh, equipments, pipelines, flow lines, and uh, uh, manifolds and plats and planes uh, and uh, all sorts of equipments that are uh, uh, installed in the seafloor during the, the commissioning phase of the field and it is used for the production. So. Uh, this is uh, uh, one of the differences between decommissioning in Brazil and in the other parts of the world, where, uh, where 
uh, here in Brazil, typically we use a lot of uh, uh, subsea infrastructure. That's why we focus on the, this initial phase of our research project. We we focus it on the on the subsea infrastructure. So uh, uh, this is uh, what are the problems? Uh, Newsy has already uh, mentioned some of those important problems that we see here. But uh, just to give you an overview, uh, we have a lot of flexible pipes in Brazil. This is uh, quite different from the rest of the world. We, we usually use uh, flow lines and risers uh, flexible in, in large quantities. And uh, therefore, we have uh, several kilometers of this, infra, uh, with this, of these equipments installed in the, in the seafloor. And uh, when we talk about uh, flexible pipes, we are talking about a structure that uh, is composed by different materials, especially it has a lot of uh, uh, polymers in this, in this structure and also different types of steel, stainless steel and carbon steel. Um, when we talk about uh, uh, rigid pipes, which is also present here in, the, in, in Brazil, uh, we, we see a, a lot of uh, carbon steel, uh, 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 in this, uh, in, 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 in the composition, but we also see some polymers used for, for uh, corrosion protection or even for insulation. And uh, also, uh, we, we, uh, we see that here in Brazil, in some cases, we have, we, we may have uh, normal occurrences in the, in this equipment. And then this is one of the problems that we must understand and, and know how to better deal with this. Uh, another problem with uh, related to subsea infrastructure, especially for rises in regions where the, the water uh, is in, a, in, in a more hot water, uh, we have the development of, of uh, 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 sun coral, for example, and uh, so inv invasive species is also a problem uh, that has to be uh, discuss it uh, to look for the best alternative for the commission that uh, will uh, uh, responsibly deal with these problems. When we talk about uh, um, other equipments, we also have uh, manifolds and plats and planes and uh, these manifolds and these equipments, they, we have some that are very old and, and uh, light structures and like, let's say, 25 tons of structure. But we also have uh, very big structures installed in the seafloor, though some with, uh, let's say, 400 tons of, uh, of equipment. And uh, these also have, uh, have uh, uh, a, steel, a steel structure, mainly is uh, carbon steel, but they also may have polymers and also other uh, electronics that uh, usually are removable. So you can uh, choose for removing not all, not all this the, the structure, but you can look for alternatives where you can remove the most uh, 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 the the the, the comp components of this structure that may cause more problems to the environment. For example, uh, so when we talk about the options for the commission, which is the target of our of our research, what is to help to decide what is the best option for the commissioning. We see that we have a lot of options. We can, uh, uh, for, for uh, flexible pipes, we can use reverse reeling. For uh, rigid pipes, we can talk about s lay or j lay recovery. We can also uh, leave this equipment in situ without intervention, or we can uh, leave this equipment there, uh, covering it with rocks uh, uh, or burying it uh, on the, on the seafloor. Uh, we can also cut this equipment in parts, if the, especially if the, 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 this, the equipment is, uh, has, has uh, no condition to be lifted in, in, in one part, or if uh, you, you are doing this with a pipeline, for example, you can cut in segments and, and lift all these segments to the ship. So there is uh, different options, and we want to, to propose a methodology that can deal with this and, and uh, do a ranking of uh, the best options. As was very well explained by news, uh, we have uh, our national regulations uh, now in place, and also we have some guidelines from North Sea that has a large uh, experience uh, in, in decommissioning, and we can appropriate this in our research. And uh, we can do this, uh, and, and as he said, uh, basically what is in, in, in common between all these guidelines and regulations is that we should take 
uh, into consideration into consideration these five uh, aspects of uh, uh, when when deciding what is the best option technical uh, issues uh, environmental uh, impacts so, so, uh, societal impacts uh, safety for the people that is uh, working there and also economic uh, of each options uh, uh, so giving you a, an overview of the methodology we have been developing we want to understand what is uh, the uncertainties uh, and what are the consequences of the uncertainties when we we decide uh, what is the the the, uh, the the grades that we do for each criteria and also we want to determine the influence of the criteria weights what uh, what would be the difference if we decide that the environment is more important than the economic part, for example. Uh, so in, in our research, we, we are proposing to move from a comparative assessment that is more simple, which is good. Uh, but uh, once we have a more, uh, uh, not all the experience the North Sea has uh, here in Brazil, we, 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 we can try to use a more uh, uh, a more robust methodology to to help in this uh, decision making uh, which is broadly called uh, mcda which is multi-criteria decision analysis and uh, it's a more complex uh, analysis but can uh, uh, help to uh, understand the perception of each decision maker and can help to understand the effects of the weights and can also uh, include some preference functions, which is uh, something that I will explain better in the next slide. Uh, and the, the, uh, there is several uh, methodologies uh, related to MCDA, and we selected for this work uh, uh, the methodology been based on the Prometheus methods. Uh, just to give you an idea of what is the preference functions uh, uh, that we are, we are talking about that is included in, in, in the MCDA, I'll give you an, a very simple example. So, uh, for example, if I, I'm trying to decide between cut and lift of, uh, of flexible pipes or reverse really, uh, let's say that I, 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 I calculated the cost for each option and I understand that uh, for the first option, the cost is on... Uh, uh, one million dollars and for the second option is one million and one dollar so if i'm just looking at the numbers without uh, taking uh, close care of this i would say that uh, this one is more expensive and then this is the preferable one but uh, one dollar is not enough to to justify this difference so in, in our methodology we can apply this preference functions and we can def define a relative uh, 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 difference between them. So, for example, we can set a function that uh, says that uh, my, the, the preference will tend to be uh, 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 to be uh, oriented to the the cheapest solution only if the difference between them uh, is more than the two hundred thousand dollars, for example. And if we do that, uh, our methodology would consider both situations as as, as equal. Uh, so uh, let's let's say that uh, let's use these ideas in in, the, in a simple ex example. I will use uh, this uh, 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 pipeline from the Casson field uh, uh, that is as a case study just to show how these uh, ideas can be implemented in the, the in the multi criteria decision analysis. So uh, this Casson field is very close to shore. It's a uh, 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 it's uh, seven kilometers from shore. It's uh, 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 in the Santos, uh, in the Espirito Santo uh, coast of Brazil. Uh, and we took one rigid pipe from that uh, from that case to do this this example. It's installed in shallow water, 19 meters, uh, and it's a nine kilometers uh, subsea pipe uh, with six inches uh, diameter. Uh, we used our our uh the material that is uh, presented online it's it's public material it's uh, uh, based on the on the uh uh the uh, commissioning uh, uh uh documents that were presented by petrobras for for the the, the regulatory agencies 
and we also use the the, the guidelines provided by DNV in a study that he they did uh, to adapt the the comparative assessment to Brazil. We selected some alternatives to to check. We we, we will look into the which one of these four options are, are is the 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 uh, the best alternative for that pipeline. Uh, reverse lay, cut and lift in sections, uh, leave in situ without intervention, and uh, uh, recover uh, of exposed sections and rock dump of the, the pipe ends. So these four, four alternatives we are comparing use this, the five criteria that I explained before and the, the sub-criteria that were proposed by DNV in their study. Uh, Regarding the weights of each criteria, we are considering in this study for the three, three approaches to define the weights. One is, a, is the CMOS method, that uh, is a, it's a method that I will explain a little bit better in the, in the next slides. Uh, that has, uh, 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 it's, it's a strong method to consider the, the, the opinion of the stakeholders. And we also use the, the, the equal distribution of weight between criteria and also equal weights between sub criteria so we we will compare the results of these three options when we talk about the simus method we are talking about uh, uh, a method that is quite simple to be implemented but uh, it's very interesting uh, to be used in in group meetings to uh, help understand what is the common uh, 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 conclusion of the group so we can, um, uh, it's based on a, on a, a card game. Uh, uh, the people in the, uh, that is uh, gathered together to decide that, uh, that uh, 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 distribution of weights, they will receive cards that represent each criteria. And they can, uh, and they put this in the table uh, uh, in, a, in a sequence that represents the criteria that uh, they consider uh, more important and less important. And between the criteria, they put white cards that represents the distance between uh, these criteria. So uh, with this uh, simple ex exercise with the people in the table, we can, we can uh, reach uh, this distribution of weights. So this is an example. We can have uh, different criteria here, and we can put white cards between them to represent the distance between. For example, let's say that I consider the environment um, more important than the safety and much less important, um, uh, and, and I consider the economic part much less important, for example. So this is the type of exercises that we, we did in the past. We gather people from the, from the stakeholders in the same room and we presented the cases to them and they did exercises like this. Those pictures were taken from this, uh, these meetings that were carried out before the pandemic. And, uh, and uh, uh, we could calculate uh, uh, the, their perception about the, this uh, influence of the weights. So using the Prometi method, the, the multi-criteria method that I mentioned, we can have uh, results like this one that I, I'm presenting that in, the, in the images. You can see that this graphic, the area represented here uh, as biggest, the area as better that uh, option will perform in terms of the different uh, uh, criteria that are represented here by axis. Uh, so we can see clearly here that leaving C2 and rock dumping are uh, preferable options. Reverse S lay is also good, and cut and lift had uh, performed less uh, uh, with uh, less uh, 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 grades in this in, in this comparison. Uh, we can also provide results like this one, where you can uh, already include the 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 influence of the weights, and we can see that. Uh, when the, uh, this is the different options, uh, uh, in, uh, leaving C2, rock dumping, reverse SLA, and cut and lift. And you can see the influence of each uh, criteria in the decision uh, as big as from the upper side here is the, the, is the bar, uh, better that solution performs. So we can see that the leaving C2 here is the best one and cut and lift uh, is the worst one uh, uh, in this comparison that we we, we made uh, and uh, leaving seat was followed by by uh, uh, rock dumping 
uh, in this thing. And we can see here that the technical, that is the blue part here, is and the societal part was the the the, the two criteria that most perform perform better in this in this case. We can also check in this, uh, we can easily check the influence of varying the weights of each criteria in the decision. For example, in this picture, we show uh, the influence of increasing the weight of the environment in the, in the final decision. So you can uh, easily check the, the, this. And we can also uh, uh, do uh, show results like this, where you can uh, check the the stability <clears throat> in terms of weight of of the decision for example here we can see that uh, disregard the 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 difference in weights that i apply to the environment i i see that uh, for this particular case the the living seat was the best option uh regarding the uncertainties we can also instead of uh, uh pointing uh uh, grades for each sub criteria in our analysis, we can also work with maximum, minimum, and most likely grades for each sub criteria. And we can apply this in our analysis. And we did this using a Monte Carlo simulation where we can uh, it provides the decision maker with a range of possible outcomes depending on the differences in the grade and the, the uncertainties that we have when we do this study. So this is the type of result that we can uh, we can show in this in this uh, uh, simulations. We can see that here for that example for that pipeline that I showed you from the Casson field, living situ performed uh, well for all types of uh, of weight distributions, and even if we consider the variations, the uncertainties in the grades for that example, we see that we have a very stable solution, a very stable option in terms of results. It will not work the same way in every, uh, in every case. Some cases you will see a large difference between results when you, when you uh, consider different weights. And also you see that uh, if you have more uncertainties in your analysis, you may have some um, uh, differences here. But this is important for the decision maker, for the regulator agency perspective, to understand what is the influence of these and, and uh, help them to understand uh, what is the best option for that, uh, that uh, and, and, and to uh, orient the decision that will be taken between the oil company and the regulator. So basically, the benefits of the MCDA is to support, to find, uh, to find balanced and widely accepted solutions, facilitate the discussion between stakeholders, and clarify points of agreement and disagreement, which is very important for a situation like this, where you have several uh, people from the society and also the regulators and the, and the petroleum agency trying to find a common solution. So uh, talking about the stakeholders, the society contributions to this work, I will just uh, give you an overview. I will also look into uh, to uh, talk to the society to understand what would be the best sub criteria in this uh, work for the Brazilian scenario. And we put together, of course, before the pandemic, uh, several uh, uh, people from the from the from the uh, the community from the society from government from uh, operators from universities from employees of the the, the representatives from uh, uh, fisheries and tourism representatives and all these people were together uh, to help us understand what were the uh, the, the most important uh, criteria and sub criteria we should consider. We also look into the details of each option for the commissioning and uh, uh, putting this together, we finally uh, propose our uh, distribution of sub criteria between the different criteria here. So we have uh, the risk, technical, uh, technological risk, complexity of operations. We have environmental impacts for the different uh, compartments in the environment. We have uh, so societal uh, impacts in terms of fisheries, tourism, um, uh, a creation and uh, of jobs and in this uh, and and related to the safety of the operations, we have uh, of course the, the the calculation of of accidents rates in this uh, 
for each option, but also we understand we want to understand the contributions uh, for this the the, the health of the environment of the employees regarding dealing with toxic material toxic materials norms and also to work with uh, divers and uh, also we have the costs here but we also added a sub criteria which is uh, another criteria sorry we also added another criteria related to the waste management which is something that we believe is very important and will help us to understand the differences between recycling reusing and uh, 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 of this material if they are removed from the sea. Of, we understand that this methodology is robust and can help people to reach the, uh, the goals related to the, the sustainable development. When we talk about the commissioning, these are some of the, the goals that I think that uh, the multi-criteria are, are, are well and, and well-based sub-criteria methodology can help to highlight. As final conclusions, uh, so we, we understand that we cannot develop any, any uh, uh, methodology without a key stakeholder contribution. We search, uh, we want to search for a consensus in this decision that will help the society to understand what is best, uh, what is the best solutions. Uh, we want to make the problem definition more explicit and transparent and help the visualization visualization of the critical points and conflict strength uh, and with this we want to finally propose a rank a robust rank of alternatives for 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 these decisions thank you very much uh, i leave my email here uh, and uh, uh, i'll be here to answer uh, the questions that uh, will come uh, from you thank you Hello, Marcelo. Good morning or good afternoon. I will invite Nils to join us for the questions and answer. Hello, Nils. Hello. Uh, we we got uh, uh, several very interesting questions. I will start. I will start uh, with a question for, from Claudio Salguero uh, from Interwell Company. Uh, I guess that is for, for Nils. How is monitored uh, um, and which are the criteria on decommissioning deadlines and how are performing operators on respecting those deadlines uh, in Brazil? Well, um, in fact, Brazilian regulation was widely discussed with uh, our partners, IBAMA and the Navy but also with the, uh, with the industry. Uh, those discussions uh, fine-tune the schedule and uh, we think that it meets the needs for, plan, uh, for planning and uh, execution of, of, uh, of the operators. Uh, even uh, the difference of treatment between offshore and onshore activities and the articulation with the permanent offer uh, uh, process uh, was uh, really uh, uh, fine-tuned with the needs of the industry. Um, as to, to what, uh, there is a first part of the question that is uh, to monitoring, right? Uh, I guess that is, uh, yeah, uh, all, all the, agen the national agency, petroleum agency, is monitoring the deadlines from the companies in ah, relation okay. to the commissioning. Uh, we have, uh, in fact, uh, monitoring of uh, uh, plans and programs uh, accomplishment by operators uh, is quite uh, uh, closely uh, followed by the agency, not only of uh, decommissioning, not only in the commission, decommissioning, but also in every uh, work plan, annual work plan that is proposed by the operators. 
So uh, uh, up to now, we see uh, we are in a uh, in a circumstance uh, that is quite unusual. We have uh, uh, for uh, interim uh, measures because there were already uh, many planned decommissioning uh, projects uh, by uh, the industry. So they I, those are treated uh, case by case. Uh, in fact, many of them did not meet the, the provision of five-year anticipation. Uh, but anyway, uh, we are following uh, uh, as, as an interim measure the uh, presentation, analysis, and approval of those plans. Thank you very much, Nils, for, the, for this clear answer. The next question uh, is from the same uh, uh, person from Interwell, Claudio Salguero. And uh, this is a really challenging question, I guess. Once new operators takes control of mature field, who retains the liabilities and responsibility for the commissioning and plug uh, and PNA? Uh, is it uh, negotiated case by case or how it's working in Brazil? Okay, uh, I, ca I can say something about that. Uh, in fact, the primacy is the, uh, the private agreements. Uh, in offshore uh, uh, operations, in offshore production, uh, the, the commercial agreement between the, the, the vendor and the acquirer uh, may uh, institute which will take care of what. Uh, the only problem uh, that we have, uh, in fact, is uh, that the vendor, in fact, is quitting contractual obligations. But uh, uh, there is an, an, a, a statute in Brazilian legislation for this case that is uh, uh, solidary uh, uh, responsibility. So uh, the vendor quits being uh, obliged by a contract, but anyway, it keeps responsibility uh, for uh, the commissioning when uh, he takes responsibility for it, because uh, it can be a matter also of commercial uh, uh, commercial uh, uh, agree agreement, commercial contract between the parts. Uh, well, plug and, and abandonment, and uh, at the same time, uh, uh, equipment uh, decommissioning and uh, uh, area relinquishing can be a matter of, of the commercial agreement between the parts so uh, no problem the the the, uh, the task of the regulator is to secure a proper treatment of the question and uh, uh, monitor the execution of the activity for onshore operation of uh, uh, production fields uh, the the situation is more complicated the field can be put on, on, on permanent offer, it can be successful or not, and uh, if successful, the new operator must uh, uh, negotiate with uh, uh, the old operator which uh, uh, installation he will keep and the old uh, 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 operator will take care of uh, the, 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 uh, the commissioning of those, those installations and the new one of the ones he keeps. Uh, of course, when it is not a matter of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, quitting the area, of not putting an area in uh, uh, permanent offer, uh, but otherwise 
it is a, a matter of commercial agreement, uh, uh, as the, sa the sale of a field. Uh, the agency has nothing uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to add uh, besides the obligation to, to do proper decommissioning, either by the new or by the no other operator. Uh, the, the question can be an issue for for the the agreement between those parts. Uh, the the agency only approves uh, and uh, have uh, and uh, make sure there is uh, the proper get, uh, warranty for execution of the of the activities. So in summary, Nils, we can tell that it goes like this, and uh, the agency is uh, responsible to check if everything is okay. Uh, is that okay? Is that fine? Is that uh, pardon, pardon, my, my sound is quite uh, low, I can't hear you. So I was just telling that, uh, Nils, that uh, in summary, we can tell that uh, no, it's a case by case, uh, and the agency will uh, yeah, check if it, everything it, is... Uh, uh, it's proper for, for, for that matter of uh, liabilities. Yeah, um, yeah. It's a case-by-case case analysis, and it depends a lot on the uh, business agreement between uh, uh, the company. seller and the vendor, uh, the yeah. seller and the acquirer of a field. Perfect. Uh, we got a specific que question from Tom Leeson. Uh, he would like to have the confirmation that uh, uh, I guess that he was referring to the ANP uh, website details uh, are uh, up to date in relation to number of wells per assets uh, that uh, are declared on the decommissioning plan uh, on, on the website of uh, the National uh, Petroleum Agency. I don't know if you can answer this one, maybe by email. If yeah, yeah, email. maybe I'll I'll take note of that and, and and answer it by email because I don't have the numbers or the date of uh, 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 revision of of the numbers we have in our website. But yeah. uh, what I can say, it's quite a dynamic question. We have in progress uh, a very a huge. Uh, program for P, uh, well, P and A uh, being uh, negotiated with Petrobras, and uh, uh, that whatever the number may be, it will change uh, in the short time. Okay. Uh, two next question are relating to uh, Casson decommissioning field, and the first one is from Alvin Borges, uh, and he would like to know if. The, the commissioning started in 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 that field and who, what is the company if it's uh, started and what is the status of, of the decommissioning in uh, in that field maybe uh, Marcel or Finanswer or Nils uh, I don't yeah, know. yeah may may I put some some special uh, 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 remark before Marcelo uh, answer to that because Marcel is quite acquainted with Casson uh, decommissioning. But uh, what I would like to say is that ANP is not an environmental agency. It only takes zeal for the proper handling of activities. So uh, what ANP does is uh, uh, assuring that, for example, uh, residues uh, destination and disposal are made according to proper licensing and uh, permitting by the environmental agency involved. Uh, uh, put that, uh, please, Marcelo. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, I'm not sure if I have all the, the, the answers because uh, uh, they, they are asking about the, the the companies, but I think I can give you an, an overview on that. Uh, 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 regarding Casson Field, it is already decided what to do with the infrastructure there, and there, there was already a bid 
uh, for that and uh, uh, different companies they applied for that and there was a decision and i i'm not sure but i believe that the work has already started there i'm not sure which company was the the one that was collected uh, i'm not sure if it's use in those but uh, uh it, it it's already in an ongoing job uh, regarding custom field because it was the first field in brazil that has the, this process of, of approving of the decommissioning and the and the uh, uh, operation uh, has already started about the the waste of uh, of uh, uh harmful substances and uh, this uh, 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 relation related to these uh, questions from 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 uh, Marcio, uh, I believe that uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, even in the Spiritus Santo uh, Spiritus Santo state, there are companies that are capable of dealing with uh, toxic material that comes from 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 these uh, fields, and when it uh, when we talk about norm, which was not the case that we studied in this case study that I presented, but uh, if norm is presented, the thing is a little bit different. But uh, we know that uh, Sinan is uh, uh, is uh, taking care of uh, of of these and uh, helping to understand what is the best options for for the destination of norm. Thanks, uh, Marcelo and Niels. Uh, next one is for Marcelo. I guess maybe it will be the last one because we are running late. Um, this is the following. Do you have any public document uh, describing the methodology that you presented today? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the question and for the interest in the work we are doing. Um, yes, uh, well, uh, partially yes. Uh, actually, the, the entire work is, is now is in progress and it's a work that is being done uh, for Petrobras, so the the reports of the work the, of the research is is still confidential, is protected by by confidentiality by uh, for the company. But uh, I'm I'm sure that Petrobras has the interest of of uh, of uh, 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 making it available for 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 everyone. So uh, we we do have some papers that uh, were presented. I can provide this to you. I left my email in the. In the last uh, uh, slide of my presentation, I can give you a list of, of, of public documents that we publish it. Also, the methodology that we talk about, the Prometheus method, is is is, a, is is not developed for specifically for the, for this work. It's a, a well known methodology and has a, a, a references, public reference that can be used to study this. And I can also provide this to you. Um, just let me know by email, okay? Thank you so much, um, uh, Marcelo and Nils. Uh, I will stop the question here because uh, we have an, a new uh, session that is starting now in a couple of minutes. Maybe we have just time for a coffee. Uh, I have to mention that uh, this is a, another link due to a technical limitation. We, we invite you to follow the link that uh, we put on the chat on, of, the, of the YouTube. So you can click there and then you will have the, the next session about PNA. Uh, it will be moderated by Catherine uh, Beltran. So thank you so much for your uh, participation. I would like to thank you Innovation Norway, be, be uh, Brazil Norway 21, Norwegian Ministry of Petroleum Energy, as well as uh, Sobina. Uh, no, the Norway, Norwegian Energy Partners, and also, uh, last but not least, Norse. So, see you in a couple of minutes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thanks, Lucy. Good to see you. Bye -bye. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you, Jean-David.